Hi, I'm here today with Claire Potts from Claire's Sweet Temptations. Thank you so much for agreeing to play 20 Questions. You're welcome. And we're launching straight into it. So are you ready? I'm ready. Question one's an easy one. Where are you in the world? And what um, I'm in Cornwall. Um, about the only place in the UK at the moment that hasn't got any snow, I think. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's I'm at home, which you can probably tell because um, my studio is just over the border in Devon in Clavelli. And here, here, this is this question fascinates me. You started your career in horticulture. How did you find your way into the wedding and event industry? My well, my very first job when I left school <clears throat> was actually in a wedding dress shop. Um, <laughs> So I, I, I guess it's probably always been in the back of my mind that sort of the wedding industry that I liked it. But my other love was sort of plants, flowers, horticulture. So when a place at college came up for that, I took it. <clears throat> when I then had my son, and long story short, he's got various health issues. So it became very obvious that going back to a nine to five kind of job wasn't going to be an option. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'd always baked anyway, just as a lot of people, it's, I think it's the same story a lot of people will tell you in, in the cake world. You start off baking family and friends and it snowballs and it did. Um, but the horticulture training actually is because I do a lot of actually got some right right here. I do a lot of sort of sugar flowers. Uh -huh. um, and actually, it's really useful having that training in horticulture because you know how flowers mm -hmm. work and how they're put together. Mm -hmm. So I've actually found it, even though I've not worked in horticulture for however many years now, I do still use that knowledge. So it's, it's actually been quite useful. Brilliant. And so with your current business then, what is it that you love about designing and creating cakes? Um, it's the creativity, I think. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's, I've always liked, I've always done creative things as hobbies. Um, after I been making cakes for a year or two I realized there was this whole other world of the decorating side and I started to get into that and I thought well, this is perfect because I can make a business out of it still do all the baking but I can indulge the creativity as well that, there's another side to you you have a degree in English literature well, I what, do yes you do what, what's very random I know <laughs> <laughs> it's great what's the most important thing that you learned on that program so i think the main thing it taught me uh, yes the love of literature and all of that but but the main thing was managing my time mm. and just the flexibility and multitasking and and realizing you can do a, an awful lot more in a day than i ever thought you could you do. <laughs> but when you then you run your own business it becomes a skill that that's really useful so back, back to your business, what five words would you use to describe how you feel when you're working on those wedding cakes, those amazing creations? You get in the zone. It's mm -hmm. kind of, um, it's all consuming. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether five sort of individual words would, would sort of cover it, but you've got to have a passion for it, I think. Um, and again, the, the creativity and the love of doing it. But it, it, it is, you, you concentrate, you are in the zone when you're doing it. And yeah, that's great because it's a complete switch off because you have to concentrate, especially with the decorating, you have to concentrate. Um, well, what's been your favorite cake creation? So they're all so different. Um, my favorite one at the moment is actually, it wasn't a, a sort of real wedding cake. It was one I did for photo shoot yeah. mm -hmm. at Bickley Castle in Devon. Mm -hmm. And it was a pre-Raphaelite themed sort of shoot. And I did um, one that was sort of basically a gold background with some sort of jewelry colors. And then this cascade of sugar flowers, which were all in quite jewel, dark, rich colors. So what about a cake that's been incredibly challenging for you to, to create or bring to life? Um, one of the first big cakes I did probably about seven or eight years ago now um, and they wanted a quarter scale of his motorbike oh. so it was um, like a quarter size so I had to sort of get a frame built sort of put this motorbike on 
and I'd never done anything like that before. I mean, it was for a friend, thankfully, so it didn't matter too much if it went a little bit wrong, but it, it was, it worked out really well. And I, I learned a lot from that. Um, but that was probably the most challenging. And I really realised then that however much time you think things like that are going to take, double it. It's been a really challenging year for many people, personally and professionally. Who has been your rock or your support group or the people who've helped you get by? Um, my husband, Richard. Mm -hmm. um, a few people will see him. He comes with me occasionally on cake deliveries and very occasionally on photo shoots. Um, yeah, he's he's been... I mean, he, he always has been very supportive. Um, right from when we started this and um, but yeah he's he's been he's been great mm -hmm. and Jamie my son because he's autistic he has a completely different outlook on things mm -hmm. and that's really refreshing um, all this with Covid just goes over his head it means nothing to him yeah and that's actually quite refreshing to have that presence of like somebody that that not doesn't care but mm -hmm. just doesn't really um not 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 even that he doesn't understand it he because he knows something's going on but he accepts it and he just mm. gets on with things and just goes with it <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about your current home working space um, well this is my office which is basically i am on the landing um <laughs> so you can see the bookcases behind and the stuff um, so yeah, I'm on the landing at home. At the moment, um, I think every time I think of you now, I think of you as Claire on the landing. I'm on the landing, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a big landing. We're quite lucky. Um, it's quite wide, but um, yeah, basically I'm on the landing. <laughs> uh, our next question is, oh, we're nearly halfway through. Um, so who's been a valuable role model in your life? I can't really name any names. It's, it's an odd one. It, it's more that random people sort of come in and out of your life all the time. And now and again, you get somebody that just sparks something that just flicks a switch. And it, it can even be people you've never met. It can be that you've watched an online tutorial and something's clicked mm -hmm. and something's inspired you. Um, so it's not so much long term role models. It's more. Um, a collective kind of background, rolling background thing of people that sort of have inspired or have influenced sort of what I've done. Mm. Um, um, and I say Jamie actually is a big kind of a role model in a way in that his attitude of, well, life goes on, let's, you know, roll with it. You know, that that's actually a very, very good grounding kind of person to have around. What's the favourite part of your day? Oh, the first cup of coffee. <laughs> you have that first cup of coffee, you take it into the cake room, you shut the door and you're sort of in the zone and, you, you know, you've got everything set to, to do that day's cake or that day's work. Or in days when I'm at the studio, same thing. I sort of get down there, shut the door, and then I know I've got quiet and it's just me with, sort of all this stuff to do that's um, nice can you tell me about something that you struggled with early in your career and how you overcame it I was never very good things like this so <laughs> sort of commu communicating and the idea of doing a wedding fair terrified me because I got to stand there and talk to people <laughs> and I was like I can't do that <laughs> um it's like can I can I just sort of quietly make cakes and that they'll magically sell themselves you know what I, I, I don't have to actually you know but yeah so that was the biggest thing of realizing I've got to get over that and actually talk to people and actually sort of sell myself I suppose for want of a better term mm -hmm. put yourself out there and sort of let people know that that there is a person that actually makes these cakes and it isn't just Mm -hmm. production line and you know there is some a real person sort of doing it but yeah I, I did struggle with that uh, here's a, here's an easy one what makes you laugh um for, uh, Richard and Jamie when they get together and you know that 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 can be quite hysterical and uh, the other cat Missy she 
is utterly bonkers and tears around the house. She's got a thing about chasing a tail and she'll go around around a circle so much, so much so she actually headbutted the fridge the other day because she was spinning around so much. Um, but it, it, and, and silly things will, will make you laugh, especially these days. You sort of find find yourself sort of laughing at all kinds of ridiculous stuff because it's just a not you know it's that that break of and a, a bit of a release. Um, uh, what's so. an important lesson that life has taught you? That it's completely unpredictable. Mm. I mean, even before this, there was sort of a few things that that kind of that sort of going into detail. There was a few things that happened that you just realize, well, actually you can plan as much as you like, but there'll always be a curveball. Mm. Um, and actually that's not necessarily a, a bad thing. Um, if Jamie hadn't been born with all his health issues, I wouldn't have started the business. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's not necessarily when things like that happen, it isn't necessarily always a bad thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, you just can't predict. Um, okay, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would that be and why? To actually live, I don't think I'd want to live anywhere other than Cornwall. Mm -hmm. Not now. We, I mean, we're, we're not, you can probably tell from my accent, I'm not Cornish. We, we're blow-ins, as they call you down here. Um, and we blew in about 25 years ago now. So I've actually lived longer here than anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't want to actually live anywhere else. But I mean, I still love getting up to London mm. now and again. Um, and actually, New York, I, I, I could probably live in New York quite happily. I've been there a few times and I do love it there. Mm. There's something about it. Mm. What words or phrases do you most commonly overuse? Oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, that's probably one. Um, some of them are probably too rude to say, um, especially when things are not going quite as they should. Um, but yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I, I um a lot when I talk and I know I do that. And that's a bad habit. OK, here we go. Who would play you in a movie of your life? Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Is that uh, how you say it? Yeah. Probably. I like her. And uh, yeah, we're, we're a similar size, so that probably <laughs> works. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? I think everybody's thought, wished about this, haven't they? And I think that that changes, that's depending on what's happening at the time. Mm -hmm. um, that sort of ability to just kind of like the Mary Poppins thing of clicking your fingers and it just all mm -hmm. goes right and all just falls into place. That would be good to just go click your fingers and it's done um everything's fantastic again you know that would be good um what has been your guilty pleasure during lockdown bad television probably and too much of it um probably too much coffee not enough chocolate that's something i need to rectify not enough chocolate um yeah probably just too much bad television I and not even anything, any one thing in particular, just whatever is on that is you don't have to think about. And here's our last question. What are you most looking forward to when life goes back to normal or relatively normal? Doing weddings again. Mm. Just being able to, to sort of do them. I managed to do a few in lockdown that were like small elopement, not, not in lockdown, but you know what I mean, during over the last year. Um, it was small elopement ones anyway but yeah it'd just be nice to get back to doing um full weddings and and not having to to worry about going to see people and um you know being able to sort of hug people and when you meet inevitably when you do weddings you end up knowing a lot of the other suppliers that are there and you can't just go up and give them a hug because you haven't seen them for a while you, you, but you'd be able to do that again and things like that would be just be really nice and not wearing a mask so that my glasses don't steam up well thank you so much for playing 20 questions with me that was great to learn more about you no oh, thank you and i'm really hoping i'll see you very very soon in the real world yeah fingers crossed we'll get back